You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? Welcome to another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. And yes, it's your host, Sade. And I'm happy. If you happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you happy and you know it, clap your hands. I hope y'all was doing it with me. (laughs) Sometimes you got to get back to being childlike, okay? It puts you in a good mood. Be more creative. And she talks about that in our new book. By Brene Brown, the imper- the gifts of imperfection. Yes, I love I love every book that we do because that's why I do this. Okay, it's just when you're reading from different perspectives of authors and researchers and everything, it's like so good to have that balance, just like that. Bam, 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 bam. Get into it, get into it with atomic habits, and then I hit you with some softness about imperfections because our habits are not gonna always be perfect. And we're not going to be always perfect doing them. And that's why I went with this book as being our next book, The Gifts of Imperfections by Brene Brown. Okay. This journey that I've been going through, this up and down emotional roller coaster of life, these books have just played so much part in being in the presence of God. Like I always tell y'all how important that is, but also gaining knowledge and other resources is important too when growing up it was just like all you need is God like why you in therapy why you don't need to read all that you don't it's just all these things were put on earth for us to decipher through that God blessed us with God blessed us with authors God blessed us with people to pour into our lives he used people to speak to us And these books are doing just that. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people, take what you need to take from it. And if it applies to you and you can use it for good, you do it. You know, we're not going to always agree with everybody. You know what I'm saying? But take what you take for you and what works for you. All right. And that's one of the reasons why I read these type of books for y'all, because a lot of times you're not you're not going to have time to sit there, open up and plop open a book and read every detail. But at least I can give you some keynotes, some nuggets, and then maybe that will motivate you to pull the book out and schedule the time to read. OK, also, these books are audible. You can we have a relationship, a partnership with audible dot com and the promo code is crew love audible dot com slash crew love. And you can get these books 30 days free listens with premium experiences they have podcasts and other things as well so I try to partner with things that benefit you all right it's all about you crew it's all about the crew all about the crew hey (laughs) all right you know before we even get into the episode because we're starting off not in the chapters because she had so many nuggets being dropped. So I'm going to start off like the beginning. It's a note from the author. We're going to look at the preface and the introduction of the book to get us started. And before we even do that, we have to get into one of my favorite segments. All of the segments are my favorite. But I get a lot of compliments. And um, oh, I love hearing um, this segment. Who? gone check me boo god is like i had several people say oh my god that's my favorite segment of the show so let's get into it who gonna check me boo god is and he is always checking us and we love a good check because it keeps us what in check and when i do the hand movement from head to chest that means It's keeping us checked in our mind and in our hearts, okay? And I feel like I don't want to be on my mind playing tricks on me and my heart. You know, listen to your heart, not your mind, or whatever the saying is. I just want to make sure I'm so in tune with God. Like, I know when he's talking to me. And I just feel like I have to get checked by him regularly. And the only way to get checked by him regularly is being in his word and in his presence. And a lot of you guys who know me personally... And everything that has happened in my life and that I've recently gone through it, it's just, you know, 
It's an up and down and relationships can be up and down. You know, I just celebrated, as y'all saw in my post, 12 years of marriage. We, I knew my husband for 13 years. We were, we knew each other for a year and got married and dated for one, married for 12. And we recently started like doing a Bible study together every day at 930. And it has been one of the best experiences because I think in our relationships, we're so often, well, in our relationship, I think we were chasing God separately and not together. You know what I'm saying? So now it's just like, we're going to be intentional about chasing God together. And that is what is saving our marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like really keeping us in tune. Cause to be together for 12 years, 13 and married for 12, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. This, this pole ain't light. <laughs> okay. So we started doing that in this sermon. This scripture, Proverbs 14, 22 through 23, it says, if you plan to do evil, you will be lost. If you plan to do good, you will receive unfailing love and faithfulness. Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. And this is not just about money. A lot of times people associate the sayings of poverty and money, but poverty can be a mindset and poverty can be in a situation because you can have all the money in the world, but still be in poverty. You know what I'm saying? And when we were talking about it, it's just like the intentions that we have behind being together and what we do for each other daily is important. And it has to be for our good so we can receive unfailing love and faithfulness, not just from God, but from each other. And we have to put in the work because putting the work brings profit, just not all about the dollar dollar bill. Profit is a gain. You know what I'm saying? And it means a, a increase in each other. So if we're putting the work, both of us with good intentions in our married in our marriage, then we will see the profit in our marriage. And it was just really good having that moment with him and reading these scriptures and hearing us kind of come in lines with the word, having different perspective, but it all lining up with the same thing. And it's a beautiful thing. So that was the who gonna check me boo moment. God is, he is always checking us. And God just like really confirmed and checked us that we have to put in the work to bring profit, whether it's in our marriage, in our work ethic, at our jobs, in our friendships, everything. So put in the work and you will get profit because you can't just be about talk. We got to be about action because like the scripture said, mere talk leads to poverty. All right. That was so good. I hope that touched you in, in something. And what just came to mind, if you're not even in a relationship, but putting the work into yourself is just as important while you're single. So for my single folks, put in the work into yourself and you will receive profit within you, whether it's profit of happiness, profit of self, um, self-awareness, self-growth and all of that. Put that into you. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Mm. OK, so let's get into some crew love, please, please, please. I didn't get a, a written review on Apple to be able to share on the pod. I get a lot of texts and DMs like how much you guys love the podcast. That is really sweet. And I really, really appreciate it and love all of that love. If you could please put it in a Apple review on the Apple podcast, I would really appreciate it. And if you don't have Apple, leave five stars everywhere you can and continue to share and tell a friend. And I would really appreciate that. If you want to hear your review on the pod, go to Apple Podcasts and click and type in review. It don't have to be long, but I want to share the love that you guys share with me on the pod. All right. So let's get into the book. Let's not even wait. This book was recommended to me from a very close sister friend of mine a while ago and then we talked about it I ended up ordering it so shout out to her 
um, for recommending the book, Brene Brown, the author, Brene Brown, The Gifts of Imperfection. And Brene Brown has a few books that we're going to tap into. And this is just going to be our first one. OK, so I'm going to start off in the note from the author. And this particular one is the 10th year anniversary. And she had some really good points coming from COVID and all of those things about transforming. And this is a 10th anniversary note. And just in the beginning, oh, I did the wholehearted inventory because this book's about wholeheartedness. And I printed it out and I let me see if I can get it. Hold on. I took the test online. Not a test. It's an inventory. But it really made me see where I was at from letting go of and cultivating into. So I highly re- I highly recommend doing it before you even read the book. So you so you can see your growth. Like read it both do it before you read the book and then do it after. Anyway, it makes this point here. It says with our whole hearts. One thing that's become clear to me is that the experience of sharing our vulnerability is not the same for all of us. Many of these systematic forms of trauma are so pervasive that asking people to embrace vulnerability and imperfection without taking into consideration their lived experiences can ask them to do something that's not in, not emotionally or even physically safe in all environments. This is so true because me, I'm an open book. And I think I've become so comfortable being an open book because I realize that's what my gift is to be able to share my stories, be 100% authentic, authentic. And that took work because there were still and I'm just talking about over the span of two years of really being more self-aware and comfortable and realizing I'm not the only one going through what I'm going through. And I'm OK because I have cultivated the environment around me to allow myself and accept my vulnerability. And everybody doesn't have that same safe space. So we have to respect where people are. So if you're in a group and someone is not comfortable sharing, you have to understand maybe their environment hasn't allowed them to be able to share outside of you because it's not about you. And I think we have to be very aware of that. And I recently had got offended about something that a friend did. And then I was just like, girl, this ain't about you. This is about them. That's their joy. That's their life. What right do you have to be upset because they live in their life? Because I don't want them to feel that way about me. So I had to check myself in that moment. And that's why it's so important reading books like this to get us to that place before we go ramping off on our emotions. Because we got to keep those in check. And reading books like this and being in the presence of God does that. So I really liked like. The fact that she just said, understand that everybody does not have that safe environment to be vulnerable. And we're going to, while you read this book, you're going to build up yourself, I think, to get to that space. All right. And I like how she left this prayer to us. And I'm definitely going to read it. It says, may we find the courage to let go of who we think we're supposed to be so that we can fully embrace our authentic selves, the imperfect, the creative, the vulnerable, the powerful, the broken, and the beautiful. May we show ourselves and others the compassion that comes from knowing that we are all made of strength and struggle. May we create in just a just and equitable world where privilege isn't a prerequisite for self-expression in an in authenticity where everyone feels invited and safe to express their power and their vulnerability. At last, may we experience the strength of our connection, the love of belonging and the grace of pure joy. And I feel the same way when I'm walking with you all through this podcast journey. I embrace all of our strength and struggles. And I just want to be here for y'all. And I want this to be a safe space for you to express yourself and for me to express mine. And everybody not gonna like me. Everybody not gonna like you. <laughs> so cultivating that is very important to have that space for us. And I just really appreciated how she um, welcomed us into this book. Ugh, so good. <laughs> so that was just her note to us. So you can imagine what else this book going to be like, right? So let's get into the preface. And I love um, her preface. Let's start. Let's start. A lot of us skip over the preface, but I've embraced the preface because it kind of helps prepare you for the book. 
it's kind of like skipping the first the pre the first part of the show when you go to the movie and you coming in 15 minutes late like the premise hasn't been set up and then you start watching the movie but if you miss the first 15 minutes you can kind of be a little thrown off because you're not set up you're coming in in the middle right not the middle but kind of like the beginning middle of the of the movie anywho it says here, knowledge is important, but only if we're being kind and gentle with ourselves as we work to discover who we are. Where we are on our journey of living and loving with our whole hearts is this much stronger indicator of parenting success than anything we can learn from how-to books. This journey is equal parts heart work and head work. Okay, so this is heart work and head work. Doing one without the other, you're going to have to do them together because they work together your heart and your head just like I said in the beginning of who gonna check me boo when we trying to be in check it's in our head and our heart so neither one can be playing tricks on each other I love that she also says here in the preface people may call what happens a midlife crisis but it's not it's an unraveling a time where you feel desperate pull to live the life you want to live, not the one you're supposed to live. The unraveling is a time when you are challenged by the universe to let go of who you think you are supposed to be and to embrace who you are. Midlife is certainly one of the great unraveling journeys, but there is others that happen to us over the course of our lives. And this is what we forget. A mid, what people experience at a midlife crisis doesn't have to be midlife. Because we go through crisis even before we're in our midlife. What people deem as midlife 45 and 50s. Because we go through marriages, divorce, becoming a parent, recovery, moving, empty nest, retiring, experience loss or trauma, working on soul sucking jobs. These can all be crisis. And a lot of times I feel like we struggle in a sense of what we think we supposed to be instead of embracing who we are, even in the current moments. Like for you, do you ever have that moment where it's just like, oh, I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet. I'm 30 something years old. I thought I was going to be here, that, there, and the other. And it's just like, who told you that? It's like, we are our worst critics. And then we have society telling us that. And it's just like, hold up, take a minute and let's refocus. It says here, the universe is not short on wake up calls. We're just quick to hit the snooze button. <laughs> that is just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like we're we're tackling these things and life is coming at us, but we do everything to avoid it. Ugh, and we just hit the snooze button instead of waking up and taking these things on head first. And so. Keeping it real with ourselves before we can keep it real with anyone else. Before we can love anyone else, we have to know how to love ourselves and own our story. So good. That was the preface, y'all. So let's get into the introduction. <laughs> like the bombs are already being dropped. Do you understand why I could not just skip and get right into the book? Oof. So I can just turn the episode off right now. And you don't you don't got served. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about wholehearted. What is wholehearted? In the introduction, she says, wholehearted living is about engaging in our lives from the place of worthiness. It means cultivating the courage, compassion, and connection to wake up in the morning and think, hmm, no matter what gets done and how work is left undone, I am enough. This is a daily practice for me. I have the list and I have all these things that I need to do and check off. Even we talked about this in habit, holding ourselves accountable with our calendars and marking it off if we don't accomplish certain things. And it's just like, as long as we did something, sis, you are enough. You don't have to take over the world in one day. It didn't, they didn't build Rome in a day. They still building this country. <laughs> Nothing's going to be nothing's going to be perfect, but you have done enough. Now, if you can do nothing at all, that's OK. Just don't make that a habit of doing nothing at all, because that could be even more challenging. Right. All right. So it also talks about the journey. Wholehearted living is not a one time choice. It's a process. OK, that's what I'm saying. It's a process. We talked about in our last book, falling in love with the process of it all. So that's what we need to do. And it says here, how do we embrace imperfection? Whew, 
through courage, compassion, and connection. And these are the tools we need to work through our journey. Daily practices that, when exercised enough, become these incredible gifts in our lives. And this way, courage, compassion, and connection become gifts. The gifts of imperfections. You get it now? Yes. She says, we'll explore the 10 guideposts of wholehearted journey, daily practices that provide direction for our journey. There is one chapter for each guidepost and each chapter is illustrated with stories, definition, quotes, and ideas for making deliberate and inspired choices about the way we live in love. One thing I like about this book is just not, it's just not about living. It's about living in love. Okay. And I like how she said, and, because this is not an or thing, okay? So I'm excited to dive into this book. And she also talks about digging deep. Maybe there are something better than just sucking it up. Because a lot of times we're just like, well, I'm just doing it anyway. I'm just suck it up and do it. You know, it says people who live wholeheartedly do and dig, dig deep. They just do it in a different way. When they're exhausted and overwhelmed, they get three things, deliberate, inspired, and going, okay? Deliberate in their thoughts and behaviors through prayer, meditation, and simply setting their intentions. They get inspired to make new and different choices. They get going. They take action. We talked about being about that action, sitting in Sautang yourself in disgrace and hurt and pain and, oh, I'm not good enough for this. Uh, da, 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 da. Don't sit in that for too long. You can feel it, but don't sit in it and take action. Like, keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like, deal with it and keep going. Deal with it and keep going. Deal with it and keep going. That's all I got to say about that. And I love how she talks about how they how people just do it different when they get overwhelmed and exhausted. Okay. It also says find something inspiring to do rather than something soul sucking. Now getting on your phone and looking at Instagram and social media, if that is a soul sucking practice and it doesn't inspire you, then that's not what you need to be doing. Now, if you somebody who like, okay, let me look at some inspirational quotes and posts and people that I follow and you've cultivated your social media to be that maybe taking a minute to do that will help you. But don't do soul sucking activity activities. Do something that is going to inspire you. We talked about that on the last episode 34. Who going to check me, boo, about finding ways of to heal um, in moments when we're feeling discouraged Pull that list out and do those things that help give you positive thoughts and to change your your thought process and environment at the moment. Okay. she also talks about what I hope to contribute to you in the introduction. She says belonging is an essential component of wholehearted living. But first, we have to cultivate self-acceptance. Why is this such a struggle? Why is it so hard for us to accept who we are? Listen to this. What's the contribution that I'm hoping to make? I think the most valuable contribution that I can make to this ongoing discussion about love, belonging, and worthiness stems from her experiences as a shame researcher. If you want to know why we're all so afraid to let our true selves be seen and known, we have to understand the power of shame and fear. Remember, shame and fear, not shame or fear. Hand in hand, y'all, hand in hand. She says this, and we're going to end it here with the introduction of the book. It says, owning our story can be hard, but not nearly as difficult as spending our lives running from it. Embracing our vulnerabilities is risky, but not nearly as dangerous as giving up on love and belonging and joy. The experiences that make us the most vulnerable. Only when we are brave enough to explore the darkness Will we discover the infinite power of our light? I was just telling someone as a Christian and a believer of Jesus Christ, we are set here to be the light. We are our own light. And you might not be a believer in Jesus and any higher power, which I highly suggest finding something beyond yourself to believe in. (laughs) It's beneficial to anybody who's successful. We know that. So, 
looking beyond yourself, but also knowing that you are your light. Don't look for your light in anybody else. No one else is going to bring your light to you. You have to look from within. Everything you need is already within you. Just embracing that shame and fear is going to help you get to that point. So we have to dig deep. So that was just the beginning. I hope you're prepared for a book that's going to move you, that's going to bring courage, compassion, and connection to self so we can go out here and accept the fact these are the gifts of our imperfections. <laughs> so good, y'all. Like, I can't wait to get it. And literally the next start of the chapter, we start diving into those things that are our gifts of imperfection, courage, compassion, and connection. Brene Brown, you are already killing it just from the first few pages, y'all. So I'm excited. You can order the book in the link um, in the show notes. I'll have the link there to order the book as well. And I hope you follow along. This book is full of great activities and opportunities. So I cannot wait to get into that with you. All right. We killed it. She killing it. <laughs> and one of the things about being imperfect that I realized is Finding a therapist that checked me. Um, being in therapy, I love the fact that it's an opportunity for me to place all of my imperfections on paper out loud to someone who's actually going to help me. And their intentions are good at helping me. And they want to see me heal, right? And therapy does that. And the therapy that I use is better help because I'm always on the go. I don't have time to drive to our office all the time and do all of that. Better help is convenient. It's easy for me and it works. And I have one therapist for um, marriage counseling and I have another therapist for individual, two separate, and they work amazingly. And I treat therapy like oil changes. I'll go for maybe six weeks or so straight, kind of heal from that. And then I'll start going like once a month because that works for me. I don't want to just give up because I realize a lot of times when you just stop therapy cold turkey, you can find yourself in those same emotions. Come back. It's a constant work. We just talked about that too in the beginning of the podcast. You have to constantly work and it's constantly your process. And every time you're leveling up, there's going to be new devils coming at you. And I just feel like therapy keeps me at bay to allow myself to express my feelings. So that way you're not finding me on Instagram, spilling my guts out and being oversharing and emotional about stuff because I'm keeping myself in check. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you know, I have the partnership with BetterHelp. You get 10% off your first month of professional therapy. So go to betterhelp.com slash crew love. I've had a few friends try it and they absolutely love it. You can't, you can't go wrong. I'm telling you guys. And I heard someone say, oh, I tried it. It didn't work for me. Therapy is about chemistry and vulnerability, and you have to be able to connect. And it's very easy to change therapists if you need to. So don't just give up. Please, we we go to we go to certain restaurants and give them one or two, three opportunities. So you have to just keep going and work it and come wholehearted, open mind and prepared to let go. OK, and tell your full truth. So go to BetterHelp.com slash crew love and just try it. I'm not asking you for a commitment, but try it. You get a discount, y'all. All right. So that link will be in the show notes as well. And so I hope you all try it tune in to yourselves okay so before we go let's get into the challenge of the week and and last week i gave y'all no challenge i let y'all off uh-uh you got a break no breaks no more <laughs> so the challenge this week is start owning your story Okay, we're getting into the gifts of imperfections and none of our stories are perfect. None of us, none, you're not alone. None of our stories are perfect. So this week, I want you to keep it real with yourself first, okay? I want you to, those thoughts and things you have been avoiding, I want you to approach them yourself. I want you to grab a journal, write it down, talk to yourself in the mirror, say it out loud, whatever you need to do. I need you to start owning your story for yourself. I'm not asking you to go out and talk to other people about your story unless it's in therapy. Okay. 
I want you to look yourself in the mirror and say, okay, you doing this, you doing this, this not right. You doing this good. You're doing this great. Okay. How do I work on getting better? I want you to expose yourself. I want you to expose yourself to yourself. Be vulnerable with yourself. So this week, your challenge is to own your story. Take accountability for yourself. It's nobody else's fault but yours. How did you contribute to your story? Own it. I need you to own it. I'm owning mine in big ways. Okay, so let's own our stories together. All right. That was the challenge of the week. Own your story, all right? So let's get into what would the crew do? Hell, I love giving advice. I love giving advice. And I'm trying to, I'm not trying. I'm intending to always give you the advice that I would take myself. (laughs) And let me tell y'all, if it don't work for me, that's okay. (laughs) I need y'all to share with the crew. Share with somebody who might be able to give you the advice. Not what you need. Not like the advice you want to hear, but the advice you need. We talked about that, right? I want somebody to be able to keep it real funky with me with good intentions that really have my back so I can make sure I'd rather skin my knee than to get hit by a car. But yeah, I was saying like, I was telling a friend of mine, I said, listen, I want the relationships where my friends can keep it funky with me with good intentions where if it might hurt me, that's okay. But I would rather you to like I said I'd rather skin my knee than for you to allow me to get hit by a car because a lot of times we are experiencing things that we don't see ourselves in and we can't see outside of ourselves so when you have those people who really love you they're gonna be able to call you out on your ish all right so this is what what would the crew do all right I'm gonna keep it funky with you it says the question was it's hard out here dating and trying to find someone what books do you recommend on dating <laughs> I did this whole spill thing and I just realized the question is about books I recommend for dating. (laughs) Well, I'm married 12 years, so I really don't have any books for dating. You know what? I do. I have books for dating. The books for dating are the books that we're reading. I feel like If you're dating, you need to be 100% you. You need to be 100% full of you. You need to be working on you. So, yes, all the books that we've read about setting boundaries, about, um, you know, the one we're reading now about imperfections, the one about atomic habits, embracing fear as our homeboy, all those books will help you be a better you so you can be able to date. So that way you're dating with intention, you're dating with purpose, you're aware of what you want, who you want, what you're not willing to put up with, what you're willing to put up with. You're being able to communicate, you're being able to say what you what 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 you're choosing to do, what you're choosing to not do. You're you're reading books about manifesting your partner and practicing those things. So all the books that we're reading will be good for dating because it's focused on self-improvement your self-worth that way you're attracting that and when some bs come to you you're like "Uh uh-uh i don't put too much work in i'm very self-aware that i don't want to deal with this person okay and i'm well aware and communicating what how i want my relationships to be and what my expectations are so yes all the books you're reading will prepare you for dating point blank period i don't have any relationship books i can tell you but working on self is the best thing to prepare yourself for dating and i know it's hard out here (sighs) <sighs> okay, I hear the struggles. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my advice about what books to recommend for dating. Anything that's going to help self-improve you so you can recognize the bull and keep it moving. <laughs> All right, so that was who go, I mean, that was what would the crew do? Ask advice. That was so good. Now, I cannot leave this episode without giving you the quote of the week. The quote of the week. The quote of the week comes from our author, Brene Brown. It is owning our story and loving ourselves through the process is the bravest thing that we could ever do. All right, crew, let's go out there on our story and be brave. I will see you all next week right here on the Crew Book Club podcast. Hey, want to be a part of the crew? 
hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.